Last episode, we discussed the Rubicon model, which gave us a rough idea of the different mental steps we need to take to turn our plans into actions. If you haven't watched the last episode, make sure to check it out before you continue watching this video. Otherwise, let's start. We have learned that the Rubicon model is divided into four phases. The pre-decisional, pre-actional, actional and post-actional phase. Today we want to introduce you to some practical tips psychological literature has to offer while keeping the four stages of the Rubicon model in mind. These techniques can help you focus your mental resources more efficiently on what's important to you and manage to move closer to your goals step by step. Pre-decisional phase. We have already learned that during the pre-decisional phase you must make up your mind about what goal you want to strive for next. But goals are often formulated too vaguely. Here the acronym SMART can help you to keep the most important characteristics of a well-formulated goal in mind. SMART stands for specific, measurable, attractive, realistic, and time-bound. Therefore, you should have a clearly defined and not too broad understanding of what your goal is. Additionally, you need to find a measurable criterion that enables you to assess how close you are to your goal. The criterion could be the number of pages you want to read or summarize. This way, you can keep track of your progress. Likewise, you should define a cutoff value that determines at what point your goal is achieved. Next, it should be personally desirable for you to achieve the goal. Additionally, the goal needs to be feasible in the given circumstances. If your goal is set too high and you fail, it could reduce the trust in your abilities which is also called self-efficacy. Low self-efficacy can decrease your drive to try to reach future goals. Therefore, you should avoid to set your goals too high, especially at the beginning of a working process. Lastly, your goal should be time-bound, meaning that you specify the time frame for achieving the goal and a clear stopping point. Pre-actional phase. During the pre-actional stage, you specify what actions you need to take to achieve your goal. Here it can help you to form implementation intentions. Implementation intentions are usually structured as an if-then sentence. Often goals are defined too broadly, like, I want to be a good student or I want to eat healthier. Studies show that these so-called goal intentions do not necessarily lead to goal-oriented behavior. Instead, one should combine a specific task with a particular time or situation. Using implementation intentions can help you with self-regulation and help you to get started with an eligible activity. An example of an implementation intention could be, if a Netflix episode ends, I will get up, go to the kitchen and drink a glass of water. The instruction is precise and easy to follow. Still, it can effectively interrupt unproductive behavior and give yourself room to take a step back and reflect on how you want to spend your time next. Another possible implementation intention could be something like, as soon as I get on the bus in the morning, I will open my textbook and read five pages. Numerous studies have investigated the effectiveness of implementation intentions. The studies showed that implementation intentions have an overall positive effect on goal attainment. Their efficiency is superior to loosely formulated goal intentions like I want to have good grades. Actional phase. In conclusion, implementation intentions can help you get started with an activity. But once you are in the actional phase, you need to stick to your work long enough and not get distracted and drop what you are doing. Creating a proper workspace can help you stay focused. For tips on creating the right workspace, you can check out our video on the topic right here. It is also linked in the description box below. Post-actional phase. Finally, evaluating the finished process is important for future success. Reflect on struggles you had to face during your task and learn from them. Think about how you can prevent them in the future. Was there anything that continually distracted you? Would it be easier to start with another task next time? Were you interrupted by missing tools you needed to complete your task? Besides identifying your problems, you should also acknowledge your successes and let them motivate you for future actions. Experiences of success can boost your self-efficacy. In turn, higher self-efficacy has a positive effect on goal-oriented behavior. In summary, you can keep the following tips in mind. Define your goals in a smart way. Use implementation intentions to guide your behavior and modify your habits. Create a workspace that works for you. And finally, think about the progress you make and pat yourself on the back when you succeed. That was all for today. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Next week we will talk about different learning strategies. Until then, we wish you all the best in a successful 2023.